Yes. Now, over 10 years ago, billionaire real estate developer Stephen Ross, his business partner Ken Himmel, and renowned chef Thomas Keller cooked up a revolutionary concept that elevated the retail restaurant model. With the Time Warner Center here in New York, they've brought together the largest collection of Michelin stars under one roof. Well, today, Ross, Himmel, and Keller are teaming up once again to curate the restaurant collection at Hudson Yards. It's another step in the plan to remake the once industrial Hudson Yards area into one of the greatest shopping and dining districts in the world. So I caught up, as you can see there, with the trio for an interview at Per Se in the Time Warner Center. Have you ever been to that restaurant? Ooh, is it gorgeous. Uh, to talk about upping the ante at Hudson Yards. In 30 years of doing this, meaning putting restaurant collections, if you will, and selecting great chefs and restaurant tours and real estate projects, nothing's ever worked better than the relationship amongst the three of us sitting here. So right away, you say to yourself, no one has more respect in this industry than Thomas. Mm -hmm. And so if what we really want to do is curate a collection of great chefs and restaurant tours to come into Hudson Yards, that's how we started all this. That's the way to start. And that's what Hudson Yards is going to be all about which is, it, it's not Michelin three-star. We've done all that. This is about uh, very active, high-energy, great-designed restaurants and multiple cuisines. So when you come to Hudson Yards, there are going to be 12 selections to pick from. Thomas will be leading the group, mm -hmm. and we have another major announcement that Thomas and we will make here in probably the next 30 days. You know, it sounds like you don't want to have a per se level, you know, th that, that level th a type of restaurant at Hudson Yards, but why not? Isn't there a market for that there? Well, well, downtown's a little different here than uptown. I think it's perceived that way. Uh, I, I think we're, you know, life has kind of changed a little bit mm -hmm. for some people, you know. And, uh, you know, you're getting more of the millennials downtown and the attraction of what you see downtown with the tech and the more casual lifestyle that they have. And uh, I think that <coughs> this is what, what the Hudson Yards afford. is. We're well, basically saying they can't afford it. No, 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 not at all today. I mean, I mean today, you know, it's like so much more loose atmosphere okay. environment it's more and casual totally more casual you can see just that just by the appearance when they go to work that, that you know life is that way so it's gonna be a more casual atmosphere it's gonna be geared more towards Millennials tell me a little bit about how like how it fits with the whole concept of Hudson Yards and, and, and where you're at there well, well I, I mean I think you know Hudson Yards is really taking New York and really what it will be in the 21st century and creating what it will be then and and it's every you can see we're what, where everything is moving towards. And I think, you know, we're kind of like changing the center of gravity, mm -hmm. which today you might call it Rockefeller Center, and I believe it'll be Hudson Yards. You will not want to come to New York City without visiting Hudson Yards. The three of you are so creative, right? I mean, you know, you're so, uh, I'm curious, you know, Chef, I mean, with you, like when you think about, okay, I'm gonna do a collection of restaurants at Hudson Yards, like what do you start with? Like what's your, how does your, what is your creative process? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think really ab about the diversification of, of the cuisines. And we wanna be able to offer, you know, the, the individuals that are coming to Hudson Yards uh, a, a, a great variety to choose from. Um, but also not just a great variety of cuisines to choose from, but a great variety of experiences to choose from as well. So whether, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a quick, simple meal where they can go in in a half an hour, or something that's a little more elaborate where they can spend an hour and a half or two hours uh, in, in a dining room so that they have the opportunity, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, uh, late night, to really be able to enjoy uh, a variety of different experiences. Uh, Ken, walk me through how this whole process started about getting, you know, getting Thomas Keller to think about Hudson Yards. And I mean, was this something that had been planned in, you know, in the works for years? You had already had thought about it for a while. I mean, give me a sense of like so the process. It started probably 12 or 13 years ago when Steve Ross and I had dinner at the French Laundry. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, we were, we were actually, Thomas had to excuse himself because he was in the middle of some phone calls with some of our competitors as they were negotiating for him to come to New York. So it became quite clear we were competing amongst three projects and Thomas had to pick which group, he, you know, which partner he wanted to have and where he wanted to come. Fortunately for us, we got selected. And uh, I mean, that's the beginning of the relationship. But how'd you convince him? How'd you? Uh, the same way that, that we convinced, and it didn't take much convincing on Hudson Yards. I mean, the, the inspiration for this project at Columbus Circle, I mean, just, it was so compelling. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really the right thing at the right time done by all the right people. And so it was a great fit. We were all, we were comfortable with each other. We believed, you know, right. we could really well, make it I work. I mean, I think the common commonality is that we want to be best in class, mm -hmm. no matter what we do. 
And I think that's one vision we all share. Give me, I, I just want some basic yeah. facts. I mean, when are the restaurants going to open? Like, how's the rollout going to be? Give me, give me a sense of that. Well, we're looking at fall of 2018 uh, okay. for, for the and retaurants, boom, for retail. Like gonna, okay. all yeah, so open, Every, everything opens together. together. First yeah, kind of like, the kind of like we did here at Time Warner okay. Center. When we opened Time okay. Warner Center. Right. Yeah. Okay, so well, we have the first office building opening up in 16. Mm -hmm. you know, in the spring of 16. So therefore, and then it'll be followed by the, uh, the retail, uh, the residential, hotel, uh, and the uh, f uh, tower, uh, the large tower, because it is so much bigger, right. uh, will open up in the uh, uh, beginning of 19. Chef owner Thomas Keller has three Michelin starred restaurants under his belt and he's likely to garner even more accolades with his next restaurant crafted in partnership with Related, the real estate development company behind New York City's Time Warner Center. Steve Ross, of course, the founder of that. And that's where you're going to find Per Se, one of the best and most expensive restaurants in America. Dinner there starts at $310 per person before you even get to the wine. Chef Keller gave me a tour in his kitchen. Explain a, a little bit, you know, what's going on there, what's yeah. going on well, here. Well, so, so over here is our um, Garmage area. So what happens over here is they're going to do all of the canapes, which are the, the little little bites that you get at the beginning, um, all of the, the salads, and then and then the cheese, which is one of the final savory courses. Right. On this side here, you're going to have hot canapes, so they'll do things like the oysters and pearls, um, uh, things like the pasta, things like that. Next to him is the is fish, um, so they'll do all the fish and seafood preparation across from that is all the meat preparation next to them is going to be all all the vegetables or the entrepreneur and of course this is the, the pass right here so all the savory food uh, Matthew here is our, our, our executive <laughs> sous chef so Matthew during the night will be on that side in a white yeah. apron as well and he'll 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 What's orchestrate this? he'll orchestrate the entire menu and then oh. over here behind oh, you is, fish here. is okay. pastry oh so, pastry yeah, okay pastry. so that's kind of the different the different stations throughout the kitchen yes and Matthew is preparing a Dover sole and you're stuffing it with a mousse of ice it's going to be a garlic mousse. Garlic mousse. Okay. Garlic mousse. Yeah, so oh, that's wow. for, for tonight's menu. That's the fish course for tonight's menu. Do you um, model your kitchens all around uh, about the same? I mean, are they, are they all pretty much? Well, the French Laundry, what you see here, um, which is our, actually our temporary kitchen at the French Laundry right now. Oh, yeah? Um, that's not the permanent kitchen. That's the temporary kitchen. Yes, but the, this kitchen is modeled after, was a model after the original French Laundry kitchen. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's and, certainly and you, a little and bigger. You, and you keep an eye on the French Laundry kitchen. Well, what we want to do is have a connection. We don't really have to keep an eye on each other. Okay. We want to make sure you yeah, see it's that connection Paul. between, you know, it's a cultural connection between um, the two teams okay. in, in the restaurants and understanding and knowing that there's, uh, you know, a whole another team team, a whole other hundred people across the country who are focused uh, and committed in the same way that you are. Uh, so that, that that cultural kind of connection is very important to us. Now, one last thing I'm always curious about, because look, you are a world-renowned chef, um, and you know, people love your restaurants. I'm kind of curious, when you go to another restaurant, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, what's the first thing you notice, or what's the first thing you look at? Um, you know, it's it's really about the, the staff and how they're holding themselves, right? Okay. You know, their, their pride in what they're doing, I think, is, is very important because it kind of tells a lot about the restaurant, is, is the pride of, of the people in the restaurant. Um, and then certainly just, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm really, you know, a, a detailed kind of person, so I'm always looking at, the, you know, how, how the, the napkins are folded or how the, the silver is polished or how the glasses are, are shine, things like that. You know, how people, so that tells how you... How people dress. Yeah, okay. it's very important. That tells you how good of an well, it, it kind of gives you a sense of, the, of yeah. how, how the, the operators are paying attention to the details, because it's always about the details. And what's your favorite thing to order? Uh, typically, whatever, <laughs> whatever the chef wants to give me to eat. <laughs> I'll typically leave it up to That's them. That's a good answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>